open your eyes Look up to the skies and... Welcome back to Queen the Greatest, where we are remembering an event that wasn't just one of the greatest and most significant in the history of Queen, but also in the entire history of rock music. The Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert. Come, easy go. The overwhelming outpouring of love that followed the tragic passing of Freddie convinced Roger, Brian, John and Jim Beach that there needed to be some kind of event to celebrate the life and achievements of their best friend. And here tonight to celebrate the life and work and dreams of one Freddie Mercury. We're going to give him the biggest send off in history. So we drew up a list of people that we'd like to be on the show. Roger got the, the ball rolling. Roger got up one morning and said, look, we're doing this, right? <laughs> and made a few phone calls. And Brian said, well, if you can get that lot, I'll go, I'll come. <laughs> so suddenly we're performing with David Bowie and Robert Plant. You know, you look around and who is this? You know, Tony Iommi's beside me, who's a lifelong friend, you know, the most amazing artists of our lives. I was the first person to sing with Queen after Fred died. <laughs> Doing it on stage in front of 80,000 people and a billion people on TV. Holy <laughs> You'd never think it'd be possible to get one person to stand in Fred's shoes because there's no way I could have done anything other than, say, the rock stuff. With the Freddie Mercury tribute show, you needed 20 characters to even come close to pulling on his coattails. The task of finding one person who could do everything that Freddie could do would have been pretty much impossible. The whole range of Queen songs is considerable. It's a very, very colorful catalog with all kinds of different sort of vocal approaches needed. It did bring home the fact that Freddie was so incredibly talented on so many levels and how hard it was for anybody to cover as much ground as Freddie covered. I don't think anyone thought they were going to show up and be the next Freddie Mercury. It ain't easy, man. <laughs> The show was packed with countless extraordinary moments that live long in the memory. But just as memorable is the message of AIDS awareness that from that moment became inextricably linked to Freddie's name. Obviously losing um, Freddie has brought it home to us, you know, in a, in a big way. Um, and many other people that I know, I mean, it, as time goes on, it becomes a more, more of a threat. I mean, the threat is growing, I think. And I don't think the awareness is growing. Um, so this, this seems like, especially for us, a good time to do this. You know. As the emotional yet triumphant night drew to a close, everybody watching hoped this would not be the last they would see and hear of Queen. It's done. And Joe Elliott was next to me as we walked off, and he just grabbed my arm and he said, Brian, look at that. I said, you need to stand here and look at this, because you will never, ever see this again. If this is the end, what a way to go. And for the first time, I looked out and I thought, ah, how amazing. You know, this amount of love got poured out to our friend. Good night, Freddie. We love you. In a way, the concert is quite important for us because it's, it's our way of saying goodbye to Freddie as well. And I think we need to do that before our minds can really move on. It's something which we had in our minds right from the point where he did die. And um, it's very hard to think on after that, isn't it? That's right, That's the yeah, only thing I can yeah. focus on at this moment is that day when it's over, there's a new world out there in some way. Thanks to the Mercury Phoenix Trust, the fight against AIDS is part of Freddie's everlasting legacy. And as we continue our series of Queen the Greatest, 
We shall see how this wasn't the end for Queen or their music, but in fact, the beginning of a thrilling new chapter. (laughs) 